when he lie in the entire campaign, even eclipsing sick, Slick Willie's lies, when Ross Pro said, the reason I dropped out is I found out that if, if I didn't, the Republicans were going to we're going to uh, uh, we're going to uh, uh, ruin my daughter's wedding. Uh, what were they going to do? Uh, show up uh, uh, with a tuxedo and brown shoes? What the hell were they going to do? Now, I don't oh, uh, that that I can live with. What I can't accept is the fact that so many of the American people, including many of those who didn't even vote for Ross Perot, swallowed that lie. Or if they didn't uh, swallow the lie, they overlooked the lie. That should have when Ross Perot pulled that, that should have meant the absolute end of his political career. Here, Tom, in answer to your question, right. you listen very carefully. Okay. And you'll hear a, a glaring contradiction, which only a liar right. uh, is guilty of. Listen. What I have said about majority voting requirements is no different no, that's than what... Her. John Dunn, who was the prior oh, that's her. attorney Forget general it. That for civil rights under the Bush administration. I wanted Slick Willie's voice, for heaven's sake. Like, we start the show, and then uh, after the show's on for a few minutes, we don't have to uh, be on our toes here? All right, here's Slick Willie. No, I guess there's not Slick Willie. Hey, he's got a re -cue. Ah, dear me. Hey, Manelli, if you're listening, how do you like the way the program sounds, Manelli? Huh? Pretty good, huh? Smooth, huh? Ah, oh, dear. How many shows do I have left to go? 346? 346. 347 shows to go. Oh, that's counting today. Yeah, that's counting today. All right, here. Listen carefully, Tom. All right. At the time of the nomination, I had not read her writings. In retrospect, I wish I had. Today, as a matter of fairness to her, I read some of them again in good detail. They clearly lend themselves to interpretations that do not represent the views that I expressed on civil rights during my campaign. All right, Tom, do you notice any... Uh... Oh, yeah, he, he never read them, but he read them again. Ah, very good. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, it just shows, just, uh, shows you about uh, out of control and incompetent. This administration isn't like you said all the time, it's just the beginning. Yeah. But that's when you see, Phil. It... Oh, yeah. Politically correct, that's why he has the job. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's the only reason he has the job, because he's politically correct. Uh, this is not to diminish or in any way to uh, take away from his uh, career prior uh, to uh, being named uh, police uh, commissioner. It's just that uh, the in-lieu mayor, that, uh, uh, that poor excuse for a mayor who uh, doesn't belong in uh, the men's room of 21, uh, it's just that uh, the only way he could keep his job uh, under his... Uh, uh, administration would be to be politically correct. Hello, Robert, how are you? Uh, listen, I came home from work tonight, my mother had the nightly news on, and on the TV was Alani uh, in a go one ear and out the other. And I says to myself, whoa, did this woman want to be assistant attorney general? I says, with her good looks, she could haunt houses for a living. Haunt <laughs> houses and charged by the room. What, is she kidding me? Great hairdo, right? You got it. Great hairstyle. Wow. Hey, let me tell you. Um, I think that uh, anybody who has seen James Carville, has any, um, any acquaintanceship whatsoever, has got to despise him. He is one of the most loathsome, one of the most repulsive creatures I have ever known of in the, uh, in the annals of political, uh, political punditry. Uh, the man has absolutely... Not one redeeming uh, feature. He oh, is, you're uh, right. Uh, I think he looks like the snake visually that he is. Oh, that, <laughs> that's right. As a matter of fact, if, if I were involved in Christie's campaign, I would have uh, photos uh, duplicated of him and pass them out and say, uh, would you be comfortable knowing that this guy is uh, Flim Flam Florio's number one advisor? <laughs> I'm calling from, call from my uh, workplace. Uh, well, uh, uh, you, you live in Connecticut? No, I live in New Jersey. Why are you? Uh, why do you say you're calling from? Work in Connecticut, Bob. Oh, you're calling uh, from work. That's correct. Does your employer know you're spending the money to call New York? No, I, uh, I'm part of a business, Bob. So you're, uh, in other words, uh, you're one of the uh, owners of the business. That, that's correct. Uh, in other words, uh, this is on your uh, business. This is all my own time, yes, Bob. No, but when you get the bill, you're going to see a phone bill. And you're going to say, why did I call hey, Bob, New York? Do you want to harass me? Uh, I, I, no, I'll, I'll do whatever I want. You called me, remember? So I'll, I'll treat you any way I want. 
Okay, Bob. Okay. I'm in a good mood today. Have a no. nice day. Goodbye, schmuck. <laughs> uh, Todd, what's on your mind this afternoon? Uh, you got a great show, Bob. Uh, great show? How can it be a great show with all these gabones? Come on. Uh, this is George the Atheist. Ni hao ma. Listen to it soon. Bob, I wanted to talk uh, about uh, Lanny Guinier and this, uh, uh, this uh, bit you've been playing about uh, President Clinton, about her, him not reading the, the, uh, the writings. Uh, I think you should pay very close attention to the way that is worded, because you're making him out as a liar. He said that at the nomination, now I don't know how many weeks ago was the time of the nomination, three weeks ago? He had not read her writings. Then he goes on to say, today I read some of them again in good detail. Now, he has a window of weeks in which he could have read the writings. And notice he also said he read them again in good detail. Uh, he's intimating that maybe he had just skimmed the writings before. So. Uh, if you want to be totally fair, uh, he may be lying, he may not be lying. You know, George, uh, I knew somebody would come up with this cockamamie uh, attempt to excuse Slick Willie, but it doesn't wash, and I'll tell you why. Uh, if he were truly, uh, if he were telling, there would not be this uh, uh, convoluted uh, l uh, language here. He would not be recall. Uh, by saying, uh, in case uh, anybody's wondering, I know George the Atheist is such a smart guy, I don't have to explain it to him. The reason they say, I don't recall, whether uh, rather than no, is that they can, all, they can always say, well, I didn't deny that I did it. I just uh, uh, admitted that I couldn't remember. Nice try, George. Go back to your garbage pit, you jerk. Send a quick message. Mario. Yeah, that's right. Let's send a message to Mario. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Mario, ascend a maid. To say provino, a team. Hey, I like that. There's an ominous ring to the way you said <laughs> a team. Bob. Okay, thank you. Interesting. Let me try it. I don't, you know, I, I need a little therapy, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you forgive me. I'm taking time out from the Bob Grant Show for a little personal self-therapy. Hey, Mario, ascend a maid. There's a provionos fachim. And I'll tell you why I do. Okay, I'm Because uh, in, his, uh, in his book, Ernest Van Den Haag uh, illustrates absolutely beyond any shadow that the criminal mind is just that. It's a criminal mind. That once a, an enemy of society has served notice on the rest of society uh, that he is a menace, uh, that he is not going to change. So what is the, what is the virtue? What is the point? of keeping such people around. Well, I know we can't shoot them. Okay. I know we won't shoot them. I'm saying well, what if? Uh, that would be the only answer to this person who was talking about uh, these marauders. So what the hell are you objecting to? What do you mean, legitimacy? How dare you? Get off my phone. How idiotic. Give legitimacy. That sounds like a fake, phony statement. I don't even think the guy knows what he's talking about. He's heard too many, too many, uh, Hypocritical politician. That gets me. T a point. If 1% of the population is gay, uh, how come it looks like 20% of, well, actually maybe 30% of, of, her, of her gal pals, and buddies, uh, don't look uh, altogether hetero? I mean, they look really off to me, and uh, I really wonder if there's more to what goes on there than meets the eye. Or why, Hilly, why Willie has to go out and he does hunt around for Sharon Stone and whatever else, one of the babe is lying around, you know? So, okay. Well, Ed, you know, that the type of personality that she is would be attracted to odd malls of all types. And uh, naturally, that would include uh, the Dyke Brigade, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Thanks yeah. a lot. Bye-bye. But as far as uh, leaving Slick Willie for Martina Navratilova, no, uh, no proof of that yet. I'll tell you why I'm getting sick and tired, because of, of, of gabones like well, you. That's my question. Like gabones my like you who hey, don't understand. Oh, question. get off the phone, you scumbag. Yeah, he said scumbag. Ha, ha, ha. Because that's what he is. Hey, Baba Booey, baby. Uh, are you another Baba Booey guy? Uh, he's gone. He hung up. There's, there's a guy who, ooh, what I did, I said, Baba Booey, ooh, I better hang up before he hollers at me. Why should I holler? If, you, if you're sick enough to waste the time to place the call, wait on the phone, 
just for the thrill of saying Baba Booey, what should I get upset for? I would like to take a machine gun and go and find you and shoot you with about 16 slugs, you and all the other sick creeps. But if I did that, then Howard Stern would have no more fans. We couldn't let that happen. Who'd pay for keeping his uh, stupid mane of hair taken care of? Ed Vinkins is the measurement attendant, and Lee Brown is surely the valet parker at that same cheap restaurant. I like to say that. Uh, can I give a, a message to Il Capo di Tutti Capi, Il Supremo, Mario? Yes, by all means. Mario, azenda me, tu se provi un spaccin. And he is. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> How about uh, doing a <laughs> hour show? <laughs> hour job. No wonder any catch is so happy. All he does is an hour. He doesn't even have to come in. He's in his he's in his office. Does it put his office? Eh, man, I'm really this is dumb. This is stupid. What am I doing here? While I think about it, you listen to this. New Jersey. Uh, I think the downfall started in nineteen fifty when they changed the birth certificates in the country. Uh, as you know, if your birth certificate, or mine if you read, has your father's name, your mother's name, his occupation, and where they resided. And what the government did was legitimize bastardly, and once you destroy that, your whole country starts in the go. And it all did, these... uh, my birth certificate doesn't uh, say uh, his uh, occupation well, uh, and where they reside. But they, it has your mother's maiden name on there, and uh, most birth certificates at that time really? did. Really? And what they now do is just give the child's name. I don't know where you're getting this information. But well, uh, look at anybody's birth certificate. I look, I, look at, I, look at, I look at my own. I don't go around looking at... They have the mother's maiden name on there. They don't. They, well, how are you getting this stuff? Well, I'll have to send you a copy of mine. And you'll well, where, where were you born, Phil? New York City. Maybe in New York City back in uh, 1894 they did that. I don't know. All right, Bob. Thank well, you. I, you're welcome. The March of the Gabones continues, ladies and gentlemen, on WABC. Here's a guy who's come up with, a, with an interesting thought that since 1950, they changed uh, the information they put on the birth certificate, and that was a signal for Sodom and Gomorrah to take center stage. Very interesting. Eric, you're on WABC. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting if, uh, if we could give a Gabon test, you know, like you do uh, a urinalysis where they put that little stick in the urine and it turns purple or whatever? Uh, just have a guy do it in a cup, and put a little stick in there to see if he's a Gabon, it would be an orange or something. I, I tell you, I'm just so sick of these Gabons. Hey, uh, Benali, what does it say in my contract? Does it say I have to actually talk to Gabons? It may be rude to you, but it's apt. Well, it's descriptive. Take a look at her, pal. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, if you, want, you, have, if you, if you have a picture of her in your closet, make sure the kids don't open the closet door at night. I would advise all of you sort of rich right-wing Republicans to read yesterday's Wall Street Journal for the article by Paul Barrett, in which he says, in 1986, Judge Ginsburg cast votes endorsing two majority antitrust opinions written by her former colleague on the appeals court, Robert Bork. This woman is, is no lefty, believe me. Uh, I object. Did I say she was a lefty? The person, the few. Did I say she was a lefty? Someone earlier called her that. Well, let him say it. Thank you, you jerk. Hi, Mr. Grant. I wrote you a letter one time. Which... No kidding. This is the one. This is the one, folks. This yeah. is the one. Oh, you said I wrote you a letter one time. I knew there was somebody who wrote me a letter one time. Yeah, well, I, I tried to be very nice to you. You know, I... Now, uh, when I, you say I tried to be very nice yes, to you, because... that implies you didn't succeed. Yeah, that's right. I didn't because oh. you never answered my letter. However... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Did you expect me to answer your letter? No. Oh, well, then what... No, not really. Well, then why did you say, you never answered my letter? Uh, uh, I got an answer from Koch. <laughs> well, Koch is uh, trying to make out as a uh, as a variety host or Isn't master right? of ceremonies Isn't or whatever. Right? No, I, t I tell you what the deal with Koch is. What? He is such an egomaniac, he figured, uh, hey, uh, this lady... Don't you have a nice word to say about anybody? One of my charms is I hate everybody. Well, then get off. <laughs> get off. Yes, and stop your... Calling Cuomo a Swachi, but when you know damn well what it means. Because I'll tell you what it means. You're calling him a son of a bitch. 
And what is his mother got to do with all this? Well, first of all, that is not the translation. It isn't? No, Edith. It I isn't. happen to be Italian. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but... Uh, <laughs> You're sorry to hear that? No, I'm very much pro-Italian. I, I said... Happen come, I happen to come from the family. Blast your head off, you idiot. <laughs> I was laughing. What'd you say? I said, you and the students are going to have a fart. Well, now, you know something, Edith? You just told me yeah. that you are nothing but a low-life greaseball. On WABC, uh, let's go. But right now, here's Biff. Uh, hi, Bob. Before I get to my main point, let me ask you this. Who's going to keep the mob under control if you leave? The mob under control? If you leave. Now, what mob are you talking about? Your, your listeners, there's nobody sharp. I've been listening to you for years. There's nobody sharper than you are in keeping all of these people uh, uh, under control. But here's my main point. President Clinton, I think, appears to be smart enough to be getting what he wants, while uh, the smart Republicans are left to name-calling. And even if Republicans have become irrelevant, I hope they keep up the rhetoric, because I think that's what's making the Democrats really stay on their toes, and we'll get this uh, deficit reduction through. That's a bit of convoluted thinking. Well, in effect, what you've said is uh, if, uh, we get the, uh, if we get the deficit reduction, we can really thank the Republicans. Well, it's like the Republicans have nothing else to do but name-calling because they have no power. This fight's going on between Democrats, and Clinton's objective is staying uh, true to $500 billion deficit reduction. I don't think he really cares... Uh, uh, primarily how the cuts are made as long as they're made, and now the Democrats are fighting it out, and the Republicans realize that they blew it in the last tw uh, 12 years, and that's up to the Democrats, and they have nothing left to do well, but you see, mouth them about haircuts. You see, you are such a, you are such a pro, such a partisan Democrat uh, that uh, you make that asinine statement, but you made such a brilliant statement prior to that, I'm going to uh, let you off the hook. That's Biff, who, uh, by the way, prior to going to sleep every night, Biff uh, kisses a life-size photo of Jimmy Carter. Gary, you're at WABC, checking in from Bay Ridge. Hello, uh, Good afternoon. Uh, I know there's not much time. I want to get very brief about the congressman last week that called. Uh, he constantly kept saying about, oh, it's not racist, it's not prejudice, this about the, about the Haitians with the HIV. You know, uh, uh, facts that I've learned from your, from your show... Uh, I don't know why he had to keep repeating that. The fact is, 80, 86% of the immigrants that are coming here are not from Europe. Only 60% represent Europeans. Yeah, thanks to the Kennedys. Uh, you got a hair piece, hair piece. Thanks hair to the piece. Kennedys, Jerry. Thanks to the Kennedys. That's it. The man in lieu of a mayor, the man I referred to at one time as the attendant. Remember back then? It's probably too long ago for you to remember, but some people do recall. At any rate... How ludicrous, how absurd. He was dying to get these AIDS-infected Haitian scum, vermin, into New York City. He's getting them, and now he's complaining about the cost. We're going to get the federal government to uh, reimburse us, as though it's a foreign country reimbursing us, as though our tax dollars don't go to Washington before they're recycled back to us. Hey, Dave. How about having uh, that bunch over for lunch at Gracie Mansion? And to show your solidarity, how about the uh, ancient ritual of uh, passing the cup? You know, you all take a sip, a glass of uh, wine. Would you be afraid to get too close to them, Dave? How absurd. We're taking them in. We're taking them in. And that just means more will be coming in. Uh, front page, New York Times, that great bastion of far-left propaganda, that sanctimonious, arrogant, imperious publication. Front page, New York Times, Saturday, June 12th, 1993. And there is a smiling Stephen G. Breyer. And it says, a hurdle is cleared by Supreme Court contender. Judge Stephen G. Breyer and his wife Joanna on their way to the White House. He met with President Clinton for two hours and officials said his nomination might be announced today. And so what happened? 
Well, today, someone nowhere near as uh, good-looking as Stephen G. Breyer. As a matter of fact, a real hatchet face by the name of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has been nominated. And someone asked me, well, why in the world do you think she was nominated? And the only thing I can think of is they had to find somebody who could make Janet Reno look good. You put that douchebag next to Janet Reno or anybody, and they'll look good. Now somebody's going to say, how small, how petty, how immature. You're picking on someone's looks. Yes, you're right. It is, it is immature. It is petty. But it's also fun. It's fun. And if I can't have fun, why in the world should I even come in here? I mean, I don't have to worry about 600 radio stations all across the country, whether somebody's going to be offended in Spencer, Iowa. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mr. Grant. I'm an actor myself, and I was struck by the uh, gentleman saying that uh, Slick had, we had read the uh, statement before he heard it and then was moved to tears after he heard it. Uh, crying on demand is an actor's technique. He's a big lover of actors. They probably taught him how to do it. All you have to do is remember something sad, like uh, probably the day he got married to Hillary, <laughs> and it can make you cry. <laughs> you don't have to listen to even what's going on. <laughs> it's just a technique. Yeah. And and this. Well, you know, it runs in the family. Uh, his uh, his uh, dope addict uh, skunk uh, half brother Roger. Oh yeah. He, uh, you... d d at the uh, convention right here in Madison Square Garden, and I was there. I saw it. This guy was crying all over the place, you know, but of course he's got a head Probably start. Probably he couldn't get enough to drink. No, he couldn't get enough to snort. <laughs> no, really, it's, it's really a slime ball family. I'll tell you. I make, I make no bones about it, the contempt I hold them in, and I appreciate your call. Thank it's you. It's right here. John, what's on your mind? Yes, hello, Bob. John of Staten Island? Yes, Bob, I wanted to speak about uh, Bill Clinton, but uh, to follow up on your opening remarks about David Dinkins, uh, this is typical of David Dinkins saying... It's the right thing to do to pay for their medical bills. Did anyone ever hear David Dinkins say it was the wrong thing to do when blacks were being helped? And he seems to think that if he can go to all of uh, U.S. taxpayers, somehow that takes the burden off him. He can come to his New York constituency and say, look, I got everyone to be a sucker. And somehow he, he seems to think that that's all right. But uh, as far as Bill Clinton goes, Bob, you know, I heard a uh, firm, uh, former sportscaster the other morning who has now pathetically turned to discussing politics. And, of course, he's a liberal and desperately trying to find something good about Bill Clinton. He said, I don't know why everyone is saying things are so bad in this country. It can't be that bad. Look at all these Asians that risked their lives to come here. I said to myself, Bob, look at this. When we conservatives and Republicans were trying to counter the uh, deliberately exaggerated negativity about this country on the part of the, uh, the Reagan and Bush hating liberals and Democrats, we were called uncaring and out of touch. But now that things are a mess and the Bush recovery has been stifled thanks to a typical Democratic talk of taxes and uh, this liberal administration's ineptness, and they're under fire, now it's okay to say things aren't as bad as everyone's saying. And Bill Clinton's desperate supporters, I've heard a couple of them, they've been reduced to pointing to the passing of the family leave bill and the fetal tissue bill as great accomplishments for this administration. You know, these are the same uh, liberals who dismissed... Uh, one of the truly great accomplishments of this century, the collapse of the Soviet Union and the winning of the Cold War, and they indeed tried to remove the credit from the Reagan and Bush administration by saying it would have happened anyway. What hypocrites. And, Bob, now that um, we've lent our men, and it's mainly our aircraft providing the air power in Somalia, I wonder if Ramsey Clark and the other left-wing rabble are going to exaggerate and inflate the number of civilian casualties and criticize this left-wing administration like they did during the Reagan and Bush administrations during Panama and the Middle East War. Are they going to call Bill Clinton murderer, or is that rhetoric reserved for conservative presidents? And uh, also, where's the cry that uh, Bill Clinton is just doing this to take the attention off his problems here at home, like they did to President Reagan and President Bush? I'm telling you, Bob, these people are so inept, so bankrupt and full of hypocrisy, you can't keep up with it. You've got to be a human computer. Well, what do you think of, uh, uh, were you watching, um, were you watching uh, Channel 7 when uh, they showed that exchange between uh, Brit Hume and Slick Willie? No, Bob, you know what, I took your advice and I said, and I said to myself, I'm not even going to watch this. Well, I tell you, I have never, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in all the years I've watched presidential press conferences. 
uh, the coverage of a president. I've never seen one so obviously, truly uh, angry. I mean, viciously angry. Hmm. And uh, it probably uh, it probably injected a lot of... Uh, his cholesterol count probably went up. His blood pressure probably went up. He'll probably overeat tonight because he's so upset. So, Red Hume, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The other day I spoke with a listener. Oh, I was see that? him. There's another blunder on his part. It's just going on and on. Well, you know, they uh, they got this uh, uh, this toady, uh, David Gergen. Oh, Gergen. Uh, for precisely the purpose of uh, smoothing the feathers of the media. As a uh, now, what is Gergen going to do? Is he going to go up to uh, Brit Hume and say... Uh, Hey, uh, Brit, you know, is he going to soft, soft? Well, it's not going to work with Brit Hume, because Brit Hume is not going to be taken in by David Gergen any more than he was taken in by uh, Slick Willie or Madame Hillary. Thank you. That's not good enough. It doesn't work that way. The point well, is... What would you suggest? That nobody be allowed to contribute well, anything? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to talk about the mechanics of it. I'm talking about the fact that very often people will talk, uh, like, against a particular politician, and really the problem is political payoffs. Political payoffs, like, for example, in the case of that judge case that was on about uh, half an hour ago. Uh, the judge is politically paid off. What and judge is that? Uh, well, there was a particular case. I don't remember the judge's name, but the, it was a political payoff. It was a, hey, not a political payoff, but, but it was no, a... No, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What political payoff? Well, I'm saying there's a political payoff. I, I mean, you can't prove that, okay? That's the type of thing. Well, what case are you talking about, Joe? Let's, was, let's... Was, well, that, you had that lawyer on who talked about a... Uh, or, or you had... Uh, I forgot the name, but it's about a half an hour ago, you had someone on the phone. Well, a half an hour ago, we had uh, Phil Crusoe of the PPA, and he was yeah, talking. Okay, right, right. Now, another now one, are I... you saying that uh, Judge Atlas uh, got his job as a political payoff? Is that what well, you're not saying? so necessarily his job, but actually a certain lawyer. In order to get that decision, the way Hey, Joe, guess what? You know what? I'm going to move on. I can't okay, take okay, it anymore. Fine. I can't take it anymore. I mean, you know, the guy just... A lot of sick people out there. Some of them sound nice. Some of them don't sound nice. But an awful lot of them have one thing in common. In common, there. Sick and getting sick. Hey, Manelli, let me check that contract, will you? Oop! I can't leave. Mike, I can't get into details, but right now I'm on a jury duty, and I mean, like the whole jury system is set up to prosecute uh, the jurors. I mean, the judges—they start. They call you in at 10 o'clock in the morning. They don't start until 11 o'clock. Then they break for lunch at 12. Then they uh, call you back at 2 o'clock, let you go at 4 o'clock. And then after about three or four weeks of testimony, they force you to make a decision in one day. And if you don't make a decision in one day, they automatically basically arrest you. They call it sequestering. But, I mean, for all practical purposes, you're under arrest. You're not, oh, you're not under arrest. Come on. Well, Free duty is a duty of a citizen. I agree it's a duty of a citizen, but the thing is, they won't let you go home after, you know, uh, at what? 4 o'clock, like a normal uh, job. Well, you're not doing a job, you dope. You're doing jury duty. Get off my phone, you swine. Of course not, but Bob, you're dealing with thugs, and you're dealing I, with... I, 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 really, I, I really think you're, uh, you're... You're not making any sense when you talk about what Phil Caruso should do. He is doing everything he possibly can. Oh, and right, uh, other, right, right. other than to take to the hills uh, with his men... Uh, that's, uh, he's doing everything he can. No, I, okay, I'm saying, well, fine, he's using the media, which is great, but I think that he should try, as I said, the Office of Court Administration. I worked in the court. Okay, thank you, Nora. Right, good. On WABC, Nora never lets us forget that she's worked in the courts. Never lets us forget it. Matter of fact, what I want you to do is put that on tape, put an alarm clock, next to my bed and wake me up every hour out of the hour so I can hear Nora saying, I work in the courts. I know about the courts. The courts! I really should get out of here. i tell you something. Ladies and gentlemen, I must be a masochist. I must be a masochist. I continue subjecting myself to this day in and day out. Day in and day out. This abuse. Uh, this, uh, I don't know. Carry me out, will you? handle it anymore. I know, Mike. It's I know. too much, Bob. It's too... Look at the bottom of your paycheck five or six times. Oh, no, no. I, I don't want to look at it. You know, I never look at the at the stuff because I get sick when I see how much they, they take sick, out. Bob. They take half of my paycheck. They take half of all my business. And then people wonder, what do you want to, what do you want to retire for? Well, well, what the heck? What is the point of coming in and, and winding up seeing so much tax go out? And the uh, Supreme Court okayed this big commuter tax? What the heck? Hey, you know, when you when you live in New Jersey, for example, you pay the flim-flam Florio and his big tax grabbers, 
uh, you uh, pay uh, to uh, uh, this uh, guy in lieu of a mayor in the city. You, know, you play the spot cheem, and then, of course, there's Uncle Sam, which is going to take even more money thanks to Slick Willie. Bob, your response was beautiful. I hope everybody listens. They look at their stubs, and they think twice about spending any more money in this area. They're draining us. They're draining us. Best of luck, Bob. Have a good weekend. Tony, hello, Tony. What's on your mind? How old are you? How old are you, Tony? How old are you, Tony? How old are you? Uh -huh. Well, okay. We got a parrot on the line. All right, let's try uh, Carl checking in from his automobile. Everybody's calling from. You know, I can't believe you guys spending all that money calling a talk show uh, from your automobile. Where did you get the bill? That's okay, Carl. What's on your mind? Carl, are you there? Carl? Carl? Uh, the, uh, the terrorist out of the uh, 15 or 16 or so associated with the World Trade Center, and the, the most recent uh, ones, the uh, 15 of them were from Jersey City. Also, the, the accused killer of Kahani uh, worshipped in that same uh, temple in Jersey City. And that's not common knowledge, but that's a fact. Yeah, to call that uh, that big sty of a storefront a, a temple is uh, is is ridiculous, isn't it? Did you fax your autograph to me, Sam? You pompous oaf! Hey. Oh, Jesus! What a pompous! What a pompous! Hey, would you give me a chance to say a word? Yeah, what would you like to say, Sam? Uh, now that uh, uh, the love affair is over with the young man that spoke to you, I too am a veteran. And yeah, that's right. That's what else you told me when you were. And apparently. Apparently, it seems to have worked, because I've listened to you a couple of times, and I have not heard those vulgar words used. I know how to work the political scene. I've been in touch with FCC, and... <laughs> Take the FCC, blow it out of your bazoo. You, big, you don't scare me, you big fake pony. B'nai Jacob, may I? What's that? May I finish about B'nai Jacob? Uh, B'nai Jacob, yeah, what would you like to say about uh, Congregation B'nai Jacob? Did you notice how quickly your invitation to the Newport Mall was withdrawn? Newport I, Mall? I assure you... No, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Hold I assure it. you... Hey, wait a minute, Sam. B'nai Jacob. Hey, Sam. So hey, Sam, I want to tell you something, Sam. Except I can't because I hung up on you. I can't stand you. There's a stench that comes out of your, your rotting carcass that comes right through the telephone, you big oaf. This guy's got a real problem. Hey, Sam, I'll tell you what. I'll take one hand tied behind my back. I'll meet you anywhere, anytime, and I'll punch you, your dumb nose down your papa's stupid throat. Hey, Sam, identify yourself, will you, sometime? I, I tell you, of all the callers I've had, there's about, well, maybe eight or nine that I really despise. Sam is one of them. Call again, will you, pal? I got a great punishment for those, uh, uh, for those uh, terrorists, let them let them sit in a room with Sam for the rest of their lives. He'd bore them to death. Hey, Sam, you pop is off. I can't believe you're such a such a skunk, such a slime ball. Larry, what's on your mind? Yeah, how you doing, Bob? I know a way to stop all the terrorism acts in America. Just we should just stop kissing Israel's butt. That's what it's all about. That's why we get all the terrorism in this country. Are you with me? Uh, I don't accept that. I, I, well, I know you can't say it, but you have to know. No, don't, don't give me I can't say it stuff. Don't give me that crap. Oh, come on. Come on. And, and that little state, ever since Israel, that little piece of land, all these problems happen. I mean, I never heard of such things before there was an Israel. Hey, listen, I, 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 tell you, I tell you what you do, Larry. The next time you call, if there is a next time, make sure you blow your nose first, okay? Oh, okay. That's a cop out. You're scared. What, you're cop, out? what cop out? What cop out? What do you want? You want me to agree with you when I don't agree with well, you? Then why, well, then why is all this happening? I'm not saying they're right for doing it. They're out of their minds. But why is it always happening to America? Why? What, what's the reason behind it? What, why are they frustrated with America? Well, for one thing, uh, for one thing, you're overlooking the fact that Hosni Mubarak, who is not a Jew, who is not an Israeli, is also targeted. There have been 171 incidents in Egypt. Why are they against Egypt, pal? All right. Let me put it this way. If what's going on in Bosnia, if that was Jews, we'd be in war. We'd be in war right now. If that was what's happening in Bosnia, what's happening to Jews, we'd be in war. We went, we fought Saddam Hussein. Why? Because of Israel. Why don't you just, why don't you just uh, say, uh, Bob, I'd like to, uh, 
I'd like to spew some anti-Semitism for a couple of minutes. Will you allow me? Why, why did she, ju why did she just do that? Why did she just do that? The policy of the war. Thank you. No, you're not welcome, you jerk. Uh, Jim cares as much about him as Slick Willie does. As a matter of fact, if you even mention the name Joe Acapiti, Slick Willie would probably say, uh, does he have a restaurant in Little Rock? He's a slime ball, Slick Willie, that is. Joan, as I said, and, and I'm persona non grata from New Jersey, but I'm also Jill from Fanwood, Jen from Westfield, Jane from Somerville, Judy, Sally, Tina, Trish, Mary, Ellie, anybody I want to be, and I always get on. So persona non grata means zilch on your show. Anyway, I just want to say that you hate people that repeat themselves, but day after day, that's all you do. You repeat yourself over and over and over again. Why I listen to you, I don't know. I guess I'm losing my mind. Anyway, um, Sino, you're going, Sino. Your nose whistles and your teeth. I don't know. Do something with the teeth. And when you say society, say society, not society. <laughs> but anyway, it's been real fun talking to you. Bye-bye. Uh, I give her a two on a scale of one to ten. I give her a two. But considering she is obviously not playing with a full deck, maybe I should have given her a four because she's obviously got a handicap. Jerry. But on your show, there's even a lower form of call, and that's the the Rush Bashes. It seems like uh, your envy of Rush Limbo uh, knows no bounds, and you, what you indulge, the most person that you would indulge, they can talk unlimited, is the person who comes on and says, oh, Rush can't shine your shoes, or Rush is not this, and Rush is not this, but you're so great. And your envy is so transparent when it comes through that way. I know Rush was on your show once, and you were all friendly to him, but you know, a couple days after he was gone, you revert back to your Rush hatred. And uh, you come out with these statements about um, uh, timing is everything. Well, for whom is timing nothing? I mean, it's all the great men of history. Timing was something. I mean, without timing, there'd be no great men who would have gone uh, the other way. Go I'm going to uh, stop and ask you a question. Uh, don't you usually call as Michael from Bayside? I'm never Michael from Bayside. Yeah, you I'm are. Not, no, I'm not Michael from Bayside. I'm Fred. No, uh, you're, uh, you're giving yourself away. Well, I okay, you say I'm giving myself I away. I, re I recognize your unmanly voice. Oh. And... And guess what? Rush Limbaugh's on that tape. That's right. That's before he became the, the, the national obsession that he is. I mean, this man transcends stardom. He is a national obsession. There is an economist, and I say this in awe and in deference and with respect. There is not a columnist, not one, that can write a column without invoking his name. There is not a personality that appears on television, or for that matter, radio, that can get by more than two minutes without invoking his name. That is fantastic. Anyway, he... Interested in saving the bald eagle. And I lived in Pittsburgh, my hometown. I, I walked through smoke and smog, the likes of which I could cut it with a knife. And you, you give the impression that all oh, the people are someday going to come up and going to make a change of it. The history is replete with, uh, with the people who have abused the public, abused the labor extensively, extremely. Right near where I live, a guy on the hill up on the, up on the top of the hill, people by the name of Eckert, they took coal off the top of the hill. They never planned a stick of grass. The dirt was go running over the road, and when they had a big rain, it would come right down in the, on the main road, and we had dust there like nobody's business. They, I mean, really. How can you be against labor unions the way you are? Over there, the man was uh, on strike over there in New Jersey at the supermarket. You, oh, the guy asked for a little bit of assistance. I, I, if you wouldn't, well, you didn't want to agree with him or something, well, that's all right. You could explain it or talk it over a little bit. But you gave him a, a total slough off, as though you didn't give a damn about labor. And, and, the, and the, the result, uh, history here of the nation is that we have to have labor unions. And of course, they're abusive. Of course, they the wrong thing. But tell people how they can have honest labor unions how they can have a legitimate labor union, what they should do to see to it that they have a good labor union that doesn't ask too much from industry and then reasonable demands on, on, on business. And All right. Uh, I let him go on as long as I did because he has such a pleasant voice that is soothing and smooth and doesn't sound like a saw cutting through glass. Uh, look, Jack. <coughs> yes, this is Jack. No, Bob Grant. Is it true that you do have a voodoo doll of Bill Clinton? All right, he's doing shtick. Doing shtick. I want legitimate gag calls, not uh, impersonations. Not uh, We're not auditioning here for the uh, Major Bose Amateur Hour. Let's try Frank. Hello, Frank. Hey, Bobby. Azendame. Disney Provenance Pachim. Well, that's 
original. And My name is Mario, but I'm persona non grata, so I have to call up all the time using a pseudonym of Abdullah. Maybe you'll recognize me. I always tell you you're a melanin-deficient genetic mutation of a black man, Bob, and, and that is true. But, uh, Bob, I have to hurry. You don't mind if I hurry, do you? Uh, no, you can hurry all you want. I'm in a big hurry, because I know you like to hurry. Why are you talking this way, uh, Smart uh, By the way, by the way, Bob, uh, I have seven bodyguards, and everybody knows that to really be an important man, you have to have bodyguards. How many do you have? I don't have any. I have seven, and after I get off the phone with you, I'll probably need another five. Well, why are you talking about the bodyguards? I because know. to be a truly important visionary, one has to be protected. That's the mark of distinction. If those who hurry around have bodyguards, then we know they're important people. And by the way, Bob, I didn't change my name in real life. It's Cuomo, C-U-O-M-O, -O, Cuomo. You and your vicious Republican forebearer, Ulysses S. Giganti, both changed your name. <laughs> Why was the president too ashamed to admit he was really an Italo-American? The president? Ulysses S. Giganti. Oh, well, in those days, it was, well, you ought to know. In those days, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, popular to be Italian. And by the way, Tomato is not an Italian. The That's model? a made-up name. His real name is Davis, but he's going the other way. <laughs> You're really a loose cannon. And uh, I know a few people who go the other way. You're really a loose cannon, uh, El Supremo. Because you've aroused my ire. Now, look, I told you I was in a hurry, so I have to go. You'll excuse me. I've well, got some... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's some I... fish to fry. To be specific, I'm alone. What's that? Uh, what about, uh, hey, how about bacala? You ever have bacala? No, but I've had some Brazil. You have? Yeah, I went to the parade. You know, I tell you, uh, with you being on the line, probably the guy who does the variety hour at 11 o'clock in the morning be just my luck for him to call. I thought you said no shtick. I listen to the show religiously. <laughs> Even when I'm away on vacation. Well, how do you... It's an addictive show. And besides, that's what my wife insists I listen to. You know, I think I'm going to come up with a new shtick for you. A brand new shtick. Brand new shtick. I've called you Svachim, His Arrogance, Il Supremo, a few other names. I think I'm going to start calling you Kumo. Oh, that, wait, but that's a sign of great respect because you're affecting the pronunciation uh, enunciated originally by the great, my, my great friend, Reverend Jackson. Oh, he's the one who called you Kumo originally? I'll tell you what you can call me. Why don't you call me Mario? Mario. Yes, that's good. Mario Cuomo. I think that's appropriate. By the way, I'm deciding now whether to run for president in 1996. I'll let you know my decision in 97. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hold on a minute. I have a phone call. What's that, Hillary? Oh, yes. Yeah, 7 o'clock. Yeah, I'll bring it I'll bring it around the back end. Hello? Yes? Okay, Bob. I'm in uh, a hurry. I, you uh, forgive me, Bob. Yeah. Hello, Ed. Is that you? Ed? <laughs> you never get sick of this, do you? Uh, hold on. He's over here. Ed? Uh, okay, see you later. Bye. <laughs> Hello? Did you kiss somebody, Ed? Uh, yes, I uh, was kissing Beth Smyerson. Oh, as a, as a cover. Yeah. <laughs> That's a neat, I, uh, neat cover. You're almost as bad as Lynn Samuel Celeste. <laughs> yeah, you know, she doesn't like you, Ed. She has plenty of company, but then you would know that. You, uh, you've you been disliked for years. I've been disliked for years? That's true. I've been... You know something, though? I make, now that I'm uh, I'm disliked, after the people showed me uh, how much they disliked me, I'm making one more. Uh-huh, that's true. A Greek god. Why do you keep saying that? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Don't, don't laugh, please. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the joke you made. Didn't you make a joke? Was that a joke, Ed? I'm, uh, I'm being, this is the literal truth. That I, uh, when I speak to you, I'm at a loss for words because uh, I am a broadcaster by virtue of my having been mayor. You are a broadcaster by virtue of having been a broadcaster. I took a shortcut. Shortcut? You think that was a shortcut? Spending all that time in the city council... Then in the United States Congress, and then as a uh, mayor, three terms. But uh, you didn't make the fourth term. How you come? You know something? I right. think you're going to write the authorized biography. You're almost like Mike Boswell. No, you wouldn't want me to write your biography. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not in, in step, really, Ed. I'm not in step, really. How can you be in step? You to, in order to be in step, you have to walk double. <laughs> what can we look forward to? <laughs> what could we look uh, double, as in double gated? <laughs> Please, don't leave the witness. You're making inferences. I don't like that. And do you know I have the button? Oh, wait a minute. I think you have the button. That's right. 
That's right. I understand you've been... Sometimes I have the button and sometimes you have the button. I like to switch. Uh, Ed. Ed, you know what people Bob. people are saying to me? How may I be of service to you, Bob? Now, I, t I tell you how, by, by uh, letting me know if you're aware of the fact that people don't like the way you handle callers. They say you have absolutely... that you, you are too contemptuous of them and you talk down to them. Uh, I don't uh, talk, it's not as though I'm talking down to them. <laughs> Just the fact is that I am on a level that many people can only aspire to, even you. So, uh, look, if you'll excuse me, I uh, have a, uh, I have a, uh, I have, uh, I have to go. Well, uh, Ed, uh, we'll be listening at 11 o'clock Monday morning. Uh, also, 11 o'clock Monday night. 11 o'clock Monday night? <laughs> All right, it's me, it's me. I couldn't fool you. Oh, Jay you, Diamond! You had no idea. You had no idea. Oh, there's somebody else who wants to talk to you here. All right. All right? Wait a minute, somebody else came out of the mist. Out of the mist? Uh, you know, I really don't like doing stick, pal. I, uh, I don't appreciate a guy. Here's a guy who has nothing better to do than uh, to call up, to call up and do stick when it's not even his show. So, uh, I'm getting a little tired of the routine, huh? <laughs> now, this... This person I can't identify at all. I mean, I really cannot identify... Well, I'll tell you what your punishment is, uh, and then maybe you'll be able to identify him. Tomorrow morning, when you get up, why don't you look in the mirror, and then you'll know why you can't identify him now. You know, I truly regret the fact uh, that we have a commercial break. I'm going to laugh at the guy. He's, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's a guy who has no reply, so he's going to go to a commercial. All right. <laughs> See you later. Okay, Jay. Okay, bye. <laughs> Like an and say hello to Mike from Fort Lee. Yes, Mike? Yeah, Bob, I want to point out some inconsistencies in the Bob Grant show. You have these guys count down the number of shows remaining on the contract, but when people respond, don't go, don't go, you yell at them. Well, I, don't you expect them to respond? Uh, you also tell people not to read, and you hang up on them when it sounds like they're reading. But recently, a woman, obviously reading, had nothing but praise for you, and of course, you let her finish. You've also, number three, you've also identified Abigail Parge, switchboard operator, numerous times as a spinster. But recently you mentioned that she had a granddaughter. Which is it, Bob? Spinsters don't have children and grandchildren. Uh, you also say how great it is to be a talk show host that beats working for a living, you say. But when others do it, with any degree of success, for example, Jackie Mason or Ed Koch, you become furious with them and put them down. Uh, on a serious note, I also want to take exception to your uh, efforts to draw information out of a caller. Uh, with the phrase, it's okay, you're anonymous. Well, a guy from Neptune, New Jersey, proved that callers are not anonymous. The key, I think, is to remember that although hundreds of listeners, of course, don't know who the caller is, he can be embarrassed, or worse, if only one or two callers uh, do recognize his or her voice. Uh, mm, Mrs. Reno, fire him? Yes. Now, don't you find that pretty odd, right? Uh, Raffi, oh, I don't find it odd. I don't, fi I don't find it odd at all. Uh, they, they're trying to... Uh, they're trying to save Rostenkowski. I know. Because he's a, he's a big schmucker in, the, in, in, the, in Congress pushing his tax bill. That's right. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it's odd. If it was a Republican, Mrs. Oh. Mrs. Reno would have gone to the end of the, end of the world to investigate uh, Rostenkowski. That's right. He would have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. He's a very, uh, uh, very hypocritical guy, Janet Reno is, isn't he? Yeah. And she was kind of upset that uh, the, the the gentleman yesterday constantly referred to what happened in Crying Heights as a disturbance. Well, I was just as upset as she was over them, or you, a lot of other people, referring to Mr. Cato's death as an accident, simply because Mr. Lish, an unlicensed driver, happened to be speeding that night he also ran a red light that resulted in Mr. Cato's death and permanent injury to his cousin. On that, after that, he was taken by the police and put back into the hands of, I guess, his Rebbe and the gang over there. The gang? Uh, yeah, and they in turn... They call a Rebbe and his uh, aides a gang? Well, that's what they are. They in turn... That's what they are? To Israel. They in turn send him off to Israel without him even making a desk appearance, even getting a ticket, or answering to anybody. Well, the reason they did that was uh, the man was in danger. The man was in fear of his life. So they sent him off to Israel. Because, because the hooligans so out there... they sent him off to Israel because, because the he hooligans, was in danger. 
because, well, try to because sell it the hooligans who, uh, who think the way you do uh, might have uh, done uh, the same thing to him that they did to poor Yanko Rosenbaum. Try, try selling that to somebody else. Hey, look, you jerk, you schmuck. It was an accident, and you know it. And Yanko Rosenbaum's death was a wanton murder. You fake it off my phone. I got punches, dub nose down his stupid throat. How dare he equate the two? Progressive and uh, illogical. I wanted to say that the point about civil liberties is really on the other foot. If um, if we define public airways are that public airways, then we really have to uh, uh, force the users or the producers that utilize the and, and license those public airways to provide a service, a public service. And if uh, what do you call a public service, pal? Well, for example, anything that's educational. Ah, uh, cut it out. You don't have education. Cut it out. How much, cut it out. How much education have you had? Maybe. Hey, Ed, Ed, you know why I say cut it out? Because, because you don't Eddie, want me, you don't will, you, will you listen to me, Ed? You don't want me to finish. That's why wait, you told me wait, to cut you, it out. This is a dialogue. You're not making a speech and neither am I. But, but what, I'm that, responding that, to something you said. I started out saying that the voice off was not a dialogue. I heard illogical. that. I, I heard that. But you, you, you're overlooking something, Ed. Educational programs die in the ratings. People don't watch them. You're going to let Whittle Communications take over educational uh, television? Tell me about your educational background and your obvious uh, intellectual capacity, Ed. Well, I have an engineer, so I went to college for four years. Really? Now, by you know, you don't you don't sound as though you're really an intellectual, uh, Ed. You sound, rather, you, so, you sound rather crude to me, Ed. But my logic is there. My Your logic? What there. logic? There's no logic there. You're just a crude, ignorant gabon, Ed. Do you realize that? Take a look at yourself, and you'll but, see looking back my, at you but my a crude, yes, but, ignorant gabon. But my no, but my strength is knowing that you're utilizing uh, illogic. Illogic? Language. I, I, I am utilizing illogic? Yes, because no, all of you've done is describe me instead of my argument. My argument is that... Well, you, you, yes, your argument is what? That if you begin with the premise, and any logical discussion needs a premise, and that's what you should have laid out in the voice off. Well, you see, you don't understand a syllogism. You're, you're, what oh, you, no, 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 what you're doing is you're creating a syllogism and uh, you're, uh, you're fashioning uh, it to, ser uh, to serve your own purpose. Well, you didn't let me but, even do a syllogism because you interrupted me with the first line. But no, really, Bob. You're always Bob. interrupted, Ed. Is that your excuse? Why you're such a failure? You were interrupted? No, as a matter of fact, I'm not a failure because I can see you're interrupting me. See, I would be a failure if I let you interrupt me, didn't get my point across, then I would be a failure. No, I, t I tell you why I think you're a failure, Ed, because you're arguing... Well, wait, I didn't ask you why I was a failure. I well, was I'm you telling you, I hey, I, I don't have to be invited to uh, give an opinion. Exactly. I will give an this, opinion if I feel like it. But this is exactly what happened in the voice-off. Instead of the discussion being about the public airways, <laughs> the discussion got to be about whether... Why are you laughing? Was why are you laughing? The why are you laughing? Because you're... The failure during why the are you laughing because if you're so doggone serious about this why are you laughing uh, from humor you can get very serious yeah, for example if i'm pointing from out humor you, you could get very serious hey Ed, you can make a very where, where, where'd you, you get your make, you can make a very serious point with humor where'd you get your uh, you can you get, get a very serious point with humor <laughs> he was very entertaining what a klutz michael yeah. get, i tell you what, I'll, I'll, uh, incidentally, there was another doctor, Dr. William Wright, uh, excuse me, Dr. Jonathan Wright, and agents with... Would you like to buy some Krabazin, pal? No, no, Dr. Jonathan Wright, uh, agents with drawn guns went into his clinic looking for records. But anyhow, that's not how I'm driving it. Uh, <clears throat> I would bet you uh, that if you took uh, 100 uh, patients' records at random, from either Ravisi or Atkinson, just at random, that had been uh, yeah. given up in other places and uh, cure and uh, helped. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that you'd... you'd sure, go ask Steve McQueen if you can find him. Ask Steve McQueen about well, all these questions. Well, if you don't questions. believe anything... You know, there's, there are people who... Are, go ahead, ask, ask Dorothy Shula, Don Shula's wife. They went to every quack that ever lived, for heaven's sake. You call them a quack. Yeah, I call them quacks. You bet I call them quacks. Uh -huh. Well, uh, and by the way, Dr. Uh, Ravisi, I mean, Dr. Uh, Atkinson has got uh, the biggest... There's clinic. no Dr. Atkinson. There's a Dr. Atkins. Oh, okay, Dr. Atkins. 
He has uh, uh, 80 uh, employees. He's got. Uh, he's written about six books. He well, can't I be guess completely stupid, you know. Nobody said he was stupid. Uh, I'm just saying nobody knows from ozone therapy. That's what I'm saying. Oh, ozone therapy. Ozone therapy has been used and it's been yeah, proven in right. Europe, you know. Been proven but, in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very right. much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Always nice to talk to a scientist. Oh, dear me. Oh, crime-related, oh, every day they have something there. Yankee Stadium has no more or no less crime than Shea Stadium or anywhere else. Steinbrenner is a liar, he's a fake, he's a phony, he's lined his pockets, and he wonders why we all go out to Shea now. We go to Shea because we can afford to go to a ball game at Shea. Mm. In a nutshell. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> you're not going to get any argument from me. I, I despise Steinbrenner, loathe him. Although I don't think that uh, the suspension that he got was uh, was uh, just, I I was glad that they took him back, but uh, I don't like the guy. Hey, he's uh, he's held this station up for a lot of money. Of course, it wasn't this management. I must say, it was some jerk we had running this place before. Thank you very much. Quite all right. Quite all. And I like George. You like George? I like George. Well, why do you like George? Well, he, he gave me a Yankee jacket back in 1986. I happened to write him a letter. I happened to write him a letter, and he and he gave me a Yankee jacket. Is that he, right? That's right. And he sent me a nice postcard, and I was able to sit in George's box. He's really a hell of a nice guy. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Right. Hell of a nice guy. My foot. Try to get more out of it. Uh -huh. what, what do you mean? How much foster it? How much do we get out of the Yankee? Okay. What you get? I don't know. The, the well, well, I'll tell you what, one hundred thirty-six thousand dollars a year. That's it. All I do know is that they have a they team can... that rakes in forty million dollars a year from cable TV contracts alone. Uh, they rob this. Uh, they rob radio of uh, five million dollars, six million dollars a year. So wait a minute. Does WABC get commercials for that? Don't they, don't they get paid for yeah, the commercials? Yeah, but do you, do you think the commercials make up for that? I have no idea. I got news for you. It doesn't. I have no idea. All I know is. They decide to do work on the It's hard. It's press hard. It's... Who cares? Who cares? Does Don Mattingly care about... Let me ask you, Mike. Does Don... Subject wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does Don Mattingly care about you? He cared about the guy that caught the home run. No, does he care about you? Absolutely not. Doesn't even know me. Okay, thank you. All right. Get out of here. Come on. Go back Ranch. to the Atlanta Braves. Go to the Braves games. Leave us alone. Those spas, I... Didn't want you to lose any more sleep over it, all right? Uh, at any rate, uh, if I heard you correctly on your opening address, uh, you reiterated a, a statement that uh, uh, concerning uh, Social Security and that people get more after a short period of time than they have paid into and are riding the gravy train. Uh, I believe I heard that correctly. Why are we pausing here? What's well, uh, what's the problem, Albert? You have exactly. a problem, Albert? What's no. all the stoppage? I, I'm pausing to hear if you will verify. I don't want to challenge you on something. You that may I say what you wish to say. I mean, don't uh, be... Okay, I wish to be know, so is that your considered position? Do you firmly No, believe I do that? not firmly believe that. You do? I do not, I said. Oh, but then why did you say it? it was I, was, uh, I was quoting a gentleman... Who is me? Why did I say it? I said it because I wanted to get some reaction, you jerk. How stupid. How utterly stupid. Lisa, you... Of the socialist false ideas that underlie the economic policies of this administration. Um, but if the Republicans are going to defeat the ideas of the left wing, they've got to begin to articulate the moral basis uh, for supporting capitalism. Uh, which begins by saying the word capitalism, which I don't hear anyone say, and basing capitalism on individual rights, liberty, uh, free society, which means economic freedom and the right to own private property, and the right to, to keep your wealth, that's your private property, and not have it taken away from you against your will and redistributed to other people who it doesn't belong to. And the, the mistake that they're making is, which is a classic mistake in, in any debate or argument is conceding your opponent's premise and they try to justify capitalism on the basis of the common good which is the premise of the left that individual freedom and liberty is sacrificed for the good of some larger society 
Where are you getting this? This isn't coming out of your own mind, pal. Uh, it's the way I've always felt. No, it isn't the way you've always felt. It's something that you've read and you're trying to oh, accept yeah. well, it as I, your I've own. I've spent many Don't years tell me reading. something you've always felt. I've spent many years reading. If you'd like me to give I you a list of authors, I would, the whole I would suggest, school of economics. You know what you sound like? You sound like a guy that just left a monastery. You know that? <laughs> it's the whole Austrian school of economics. Sound like you'd be a economics. lot of fun at a party. Thank you for the call. <laughs>